Perfecto. Buenos días a todos. Eh, gusto en saludarlos. Estamos en un seminario, en un webinario más de la Asociación Mexicana de Ultrasonografía Crítica y Urgencias con su unidad internacional de entrenamiento en la ciudad de Guadalajara. Es para nosotros un honor y un gusto estar transmitiendo a ustedes desde México. Sabemos que hay mucha gente en Latinoamérica que nos sigue. Estamos muy contentos. Les damos la bienvenida a todos ustedes. Ojalá nos puedan ir comentando desde dónde nos están escuchando, qué están haciendo a todos nuestros amigos de Facebook. Eh, quisiéramos saber eh, en dónde están al momento de, de, del webinario y en los días subsecuentes, porque sabemos que, que nuestros webinarios se quedan permanentemente en, la, en nuestra página de Facebook, así como nuestro sitio de amusco.mx, que los invito a, a revisarlo. Y bueno, en el transcurso de las horas o de los días, de las semanas, ustedes podrán ver todos nuestros webinarios de, de manera tranquila, eh, poderlos repasar una y otra vez, tomar notas, eh, checar los artículos, etcétera. Y bueno, aún aunque no estén en vivo, díganos desde dónde nos escuchan, eh, qué especialidad tienen, cómo utilizan el ultrasonido. Nos va a dar mucho gusto y nos encantaría saber más acerca de ustedes. Y pues bueno, en esta ocasión estamos eh, igualmente honrados y contentos como siempre por tener a un experto en ultrasonido de la vía aérea a nivel mundial, que es el doctor Alan Sustich, desde Croacia. Él ha accedido amablemente a acompañarnos y a transmitir su vasto conocimiento sobre el ultrasonido de la vía aérea. Sin duda alguna, compañeros, les puedo asegurar que él es un top mundial, es un líder de opinión en el tema de la vía aérea y el ultrasonido. Ustedes pueden checar todas sus publicaciones, ha escrito mucho, sobre el preoperatorio, sobre el transquirúrgico, cómo utilizar el ultrasonido de la vía aérea en la evaluación preoperatoria, etcétera, así como durante los procedimientos de tracostomía percutánea, en fin, tiene muchos trabajos muy interesantes y los invito desde luego a, a repasarlos, a verlos. De tal manera que, bueno, estamos muy honrados por el doctor Alan, al cual le doy la bienvenida. Thank you, doctor Alan, thank you for accepting this invitation. You are welcome to Mexico in a virtual way. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Alan, really, really, we are honored. Thank you for being part of this webinar. Uh, it's a privilege to share this moment with you. And um, please, Alan, uh, let's get started with your conference. Thank you so much. Thank you, Juan. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to me be, be with you in, in this the distance, distance hospitality. I will talk uh, uh, in my session about the role of ultrasound in the area management and just on the beginning I will show you one picture of my town in, uh, in, in the winter uh, night. Here is our ski resort and famous creation uh, uh, ski Anisa Kostelic was start with his career somewhere here and here our pool and water polo, a very strong water polo club, and here's our uh, 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 soccer station. And okay, uh, first review article about uh, this topic uh, was, was published uh, nearly 20 years ago, and that was just a uh, just, uh, short part uh, dedicated to, 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 to the airway. Um, uh, my 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 review article published in critical care medicine 11 years ago was the first uh, paper um, in, in in totally dedicated just about about error management in critically ill patient today we can say that um, ultrasound interventional ultrasound in icu in, in, in we use in in the cardiothoracic part the vascular part abdominal and pelvis part and of, of course in every part this uh, there is a two possible topics if we're talking about ultrasound in area that's percutaneous tracheostomy and uh, or an intubation uh, this section this my section is dedicated to intubation um, because we have a limited time and there is a Percutaneous tracheostomy is, uh, is uh, also a huge, huge part of using uh, ultrasound. Uh, first of all, just um, some, some, some slides about, about orientation and uh, picture optimization uh, of, of the neck. Here you can see uh, typical slides of the neck. 
start uh, somewhere in 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 uh, there is uh, first transfer view is somewhere on the level of of, of uh, superstar uh, Noch, and uh, first picture uh, is uh, with a tiered land and uh, trachea cartilage and of course uh, air in 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 trachea. Uh, second scan is somewhere on the level of uh, cricoid cartilage and um, there, there is in, uh, here also you can see air and air muscular interface uh, between between uh, the in in in, in into the, in into the trachea and uh, step three is somewhere uh, somewhere uh, um, upper you you can see uh, in some cases not in every case but you can see uh, 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 vocalis muscles and uh, uh, arytenoid cartilage but in all cases you will you will see uh, tyroid cartilage but in Later on, I will show you why in some cases can be important to see uh, arytenoid cartilage. And uh, last, last scan, the highest one, is a transverse uh, scan uh, on a heroid bone. There, there, is, there is important scan uh, if you use ultrasound for a, a, a superior laryngeal nerve block, what, what I will show you uh, later, later on. And of course, when you only view at the level of substeral noch, you, and there is there is very important in uh, very important scan. Uh, in, in this scan, you can see uh, tracheal rings and cricoid cartilage. This is important for percutaneous tracheostomy. Not so important for for uh, for for preoperative assessment and, and intubation. How? How it looks in 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 in, in real time. This is a, um, a tiroid gland, and now is a, a longitudinal scan. Here you can see uh, tracheal rings, and it's very easy to 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 find the space between between tracheal rings. Uh, uh, objective of my my presentation is pre intubation assessment. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, the role of ultrasound in placement on endotracheal tube. There is pre intubation assessment, verification of endotracheal tube position, uh, something about extubation failure, and uh, something about uh, proper endotracheal tube and left double lumen tube selection. This is important for especially for, for, for thoracic surgery, not so for intensive care medicine. Uh, pre intubation assessment that that was some some studies um, in which authors tried to 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 detect uh, uh, difficult laryngoscopy with a measurement of an anterior neck soft tissue but there is no such such good data for 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 this we know that from ct scan and also from from, from ultrasound but this is a very for me very important paper published 6 years ago by uh, Jacek Wojciak and here you can see that uh, uh, that conclusion is that preoperative assessment of hero uh, mental distance, especially hero mental distance ratio, is a good predictor for uh, difficult uh, 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 for difficult laryngoscopy. Uh, that is an interesting and a very nice paper, but is published in ultrasound journal in ultrasound uh, literature, and is uh, over all in this. Uh, Overlooked by 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 a critical care physician or by by anesthesiologist, unfortunately. Uh, also, ultrasound can be useful in in in, in management of the patient with obstructive sleep apnea, especially if you want to identify uh, location and mechanism of every obstruction, especially in patient with. Uh, with so-called uh, 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 peripheral uh, uh, type of, of uh, uh, sleep apnea. So of course, all kind of pathology on the neck is very easy to, to see with ultrasound, this is it's clear. This is also interest paper and very useful in everyday practice. This is a paper published by Mike Byweis and um, about uh, the detection of gastric fullness in emergency, emergency room in or um, uh, pre intubation assessment of a patient with um, 
in emergency department and uh, th this is very very useful and very easy but this is also useful is in, for in, 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 in for anesthesia uh, in preoperative an assessment of obstetric uh, uh, patient and here you can see that combination with airway assessment and gastric volume assessment it is very useful in, in preoperative uh, uh, in preoperative preoperative uh, 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 detection of potential uh, airway management problems in this especially complicated patient from airway management point of view. Also, with ultrasound, you can detect uh, um, some foraging bodies, and in this case, this is a coin. And this is a very important philosophy when you use uh, ultrasound in area management. It's meaning if you can see something in digestive tract that is not in respiratory tract, this, this philosophy is useful and you will see later in some other, other, other uh, circumstances. Also, uh, in some cases, it's possible to, to detect uh, so-called A-line uh, described by uh, Daniel Lichtenstein. And this is uh, this A line are um, uh, practically pathognomonic for for uh, either degenerative tract injury because they are uh, talking about cutaneous emphysema and um, it's, it's very dangerous situation for as you know in in emergency department. Also, some other, you can see uh, a trauma of uh, of um, tibial cartilage. This is a paper published four years ago in the medicine and it's clearly see a fracture of tyroid cartilage, a very nice picture with, 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 with ultrasound, a nice presentation with ultrasound. Also what is useful, there is a, a, a superior laryngeal nerve block, if you, um, if you prepare patients for a wake intubation or you have some situation that you, you the patient is, is vague but, but is vague but, but, with, but with a tube and this is a, a nice paper uh, about this topic about the superior laryngeal nerve block with ultrasound here is a hearing bone and just below hearing hearing bone you will see arteria arterial uh, uh, um, um, findings and here is here is here is here is a superior laryngeal nerve it's a very 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 useful and very very easy my suggestion is to try this this uh, this block is very is, is very easy to perform it i will talk you something about the vacation and tracheal tube position uh, uh, as you know, uh, uh, in, in Europe, is the uh, uh, gold standard is capnography, but capnography have some uh, in some circumstances is, is, is not so so precise, and uh, capnography failed to provide direct anatomic evidence uh, of, of of position of endotracheal tube. Um, story started 14 years ago by Chinese group of authors and. Um, the first idea was that if endotracheal tube is in the correct position, that you will see a bilateral motion of uh, diaphragm. Uh, and if is uh, what's meaning you have exp equal expansion of bilateral lungs. If you have nothing, that meaning that uh, endotracheal tube is in the esophagus. Uh, if pa patient is already paralyzed. Uh, the, the, the esophageal intubation will result uh, something what we can uh, say paradox diaphragm or even a reverse motion of, of, of diaphragm. Uh, this is uh, this um, this idea is uh, very is uh, very shortly after this first publication published in pre hospital disaster medicine by by Andy Kipati group. And that was a very, very uh, uh, nice idea for using ultrasound for verification of uh, correct uh, endotracheal tube position. Uh, if, you, if you see lung uh, sliding uh, in, in, in uh, 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 second or third intercostal space on the left side, this meaning uh, you, have, um, uh, you, 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 uh, you have ventilation of the left lung, and if you have ventilation of the left lung, that's meaning you have not, uh, you have an esophageal intubation or right main stem intubation. It's a very easy, and uh, it's, it's very useful for everyday everyday practice. What you 
looking for you're looking for uh, this uh, this uh, sign you're looking for a uh, 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 land uh, slading and if you have land slading this meaning that the, 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 there is there is ventilation of uh, this part of land if you have that on uh, in front this meaning in uh, um, between uh, if you see that in between uh, in the uh, second or third or fourth intercostal space, this meaning you have uh, a proper ventilation of the de of de that side of, of, of land. Um, uh, also, this is possible to fill the Jacques tube cuff with saline, and that's the, the, in that case, you will have maybe some better visualization. If you have uh, right main bronch into main stain bronch intubation uh, on the left side. Uh, you will see something what we call lung pulse. Uh, it's, this is it's 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 a transition of uh, of of a hard pulsation on the lung, and it's a similar with ECG. And this is this is a sure sign that your your, your tube is so deep. Uh, this is a, a, a earlier I said that there is a philosophy is something is in the digestive tract that is not in, in, in the respiratory tract. This is a paper and this philosophy this is in, in published in a citation by a Taiwan group of authors. This is a, this meaning true, it's meaning a tracheal rapid ultrasound examination. And what you can see here, there is a, there is a, 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 there is a esophagus. Here is a tube in esophagus. That is meaning tube is not in trachea. This is a very simple, a simple philosophy. Very useful. You will see later on. And uh, there is uh, some Turkish uh, authors uh, published in, in ultrasound medicine. They use this 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 philosophy and they found 100% uh, uh, of tracheal placements and 100% of esophageal placement of of, of endotracheal tube. It's very 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 uh, it's very uh, strong results. Also, it's very useful uh, in, in all kinds of patients, including overweight and obese patients. Uh, same philosophy, you will also see a lung slading, there's no problem. And also, it's very useful in pediatric airway and also in, in, in infants, which, which is very, very, uh, very challenging to, to, to manage uh, airway, uh, airway in this, this, this special, uh, small, our small patient. This is a uh, uh, excellent review article published two years ago in pediatric critical care medicine and here is that algorithm very easy algorithm there is meaning if you have something what you can call like a, a double tracheal sign this meaning trachea and here is esophagus this is esophageal intubation and of course you need reintubation if you find that esophagus is empty there is meaning if you have positive movements of right and left side. This is proper position of the tube. If you have movement on right side, but you have no movements of left side, that's meaning you have not lung, lung slaving on left side, this is probably, this is, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, 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 right mainstream intubation. And if you have not movements of both sides, that is, uh, as, that is esophageal intubation or or some other kind of 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 of, uh, of uh, obstruction. It's a very easy uh, uh, algorithm and, and very very useful for everyday uh, work. And also, uh, uh, with uh, if in some cases you, you can use uh, what I say earlier, you can use um, uh, saline and 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 uh, uh, and, and of. You will, you will have a very nice visualization of cuff. In some cases, it can be useful, uh, especially that can be useful in, in, in case when you're performing a percutaneous tracheostomy. Uh, ultrasound examination can replace uh, 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 fiber optic examination for uh, confirmation of position of uh, lineal uh, mask array. Uh, uh, this is uh, how you you will see correct position this is the correct position and this is why i said earlier there is important in some cases to detect arterial cartilage if they are in, in the same uh, line this meaning that that position is of laryngeal mask is correct if you have something like this 
This is meaning that is there is the, there is not correct position. There is some angulation of of, of lining the mask, and of course you can re, re, make reposition of of laryngeal mask in some like like this case. Uh, <coughs> left double lumen tube position is very important from thoracic anesthesia and thoracic surgery. In some uh, some very uncommon cases, can be useful in 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 in, in intensive care medicine, but uh, but uh, very rare. But in 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 uh, thoracic surgery is very important. And uh, we analyzed in uh, we had a brief ultrasound examination to clinical assessment, and the gold standard, of course, was was. Uh, bronchoscopy, and we found that our positive our accuracy for for exact position of uh, left double lumen tube was uh, nearly uh, 90 nearly 90 percent uh, this is a, this this is a very uh, very this is not uh, this is a low level competency and can be uh, useful for for a trained nurse and, and that is not necessary to to do that uh, anesthesiologist. This means uh, detection of lot sliding is uh, is uh, very easy to detect it and very useful for for detection of, of correct position of, of a tube. And that the, this um, kind of competency is um, for me, and I think that um, many physicians will agree with me. There is not competency uh, just for physician. They can do any nurse or respiratory therapist. It. Uh, something about uh, extubation failure. First of all, you will see very easily uh, result of sound uh, uh, laryngeal edema and uh, epiglossitis with some post extubation stridor. But uh, much important is to, to quantify quantification of respiratory muscle uh, strain. And uh, the first idea. Uh, was published by 14 years ago by measurement of uh, liver and spleen displacement during spontaneous breathing trial before extirpation of patient. But that is, uh, it's not, it's, 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 it's in some kind of robust method because uh, movements of liver and spleen are not so exact like some other, uh, uh, other measurements. Also, that was some idea uh, about um, uh, about uh, using the ultrasound for information about aeration during uh, spontaneous bleeding uh, trial, and authors suggest that maybe that can be a good way to detect extubation failure if you have a loss of lung aeration. But that was also um, uh, uh, not so so uh, useful in extubation failure, but in other, uh, but was uh, uh, was was useful in in uh, in um, in um, uh, measurement of uh, um, uh, optimal PEEP or or optimal uh, 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 optimal other uh, parameters during uh, during uh, recruitment. And here you can see uh, um, different parameters in this paper published uh, last year in medicine. And this is uh, oxygen uh, guided um, recruitment. And here is a, a, a ultrasound, a lung ultrasound guided recruitment. And um, more or less all parameters are better in, in a lung ultrasound guided recruitment. Uh, but what was what what is the, the, the most important part of of uh, role of ultrasound in extubation failure? Uh, the, uh, obviously, that is a possibility that with ultrasound you can uh, uh, monitor uh, diaphragm movements, uh, you can detect any diaphragm dysfunction, you can uh, um, uh, the, 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 you can detect uh, uh, some. Thickness uh, and uh, uh, respiratory strain of diaphragm, and there is a lot of uh, data in last few years about how useful is is uh, um, uh, uh, diaphragm ultrasound in in predicting of uh, extubation failure in 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 a, a patient with a, a, a long term ventilation and so on and so on. This is a, a paper a review article by Zambon in critical care medicine and here you can find all uh, all, all possibility how uh, and where is important to, to make a measurement. Um, 
there is a lot of data that uh, that uh, um, um, thickens of uh, of uh, uh, um, uh, of diaphragma uh, uh, delta uh, uh, change of of, of diameter uh, of thickness of diaphragma between uh, inspiring and, and expiring is uh, is good parameter for for predicting of the extubation failure and there is there is a cut off point is somewhere about 30 percent of uh, uh, delta this about 30 35 to 40 percent of uh, delta thickness here is uh, how is uh, how uh, easy is detect uh, uh, to see how uh, important is diaphragma during uh, and measurement of diaphragma and uh, how ultrasound can easily detect uh, diameter of uh, diaphragma there is a four cases patient with narrow muscular blockage controlled ventilation patient partly as assisted ventilation and health subject this is uh, easy to see how uh, inspiratory uh, thickness fraction is different is this kind of patient. And uh, uh, also, uh, 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 this is another uh, review article by Zambon. This is in European uh, uh, literature, care medicine, and also uh, uh, not just diaphragm excursion is uh, useful. You can also. Uh, here, a very uh, uh, measurement uh, exclusion on the end, on the on the far far side, and uh, um, this is uh, maybe easier in some cases if if you have a patient um, in difficult position or, or I don't know in, in, in some other circumstances. And on the end of my presentation, I will send something about uh, uh, endo, uh, proper endotracheal tube and uh, double lumen tube selection. Um, uh, size of the, the tube is very important in, in our small patients, in infants, and in children, especially in infants. And uh, 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 in this paper published eight years ago by Shibasaki, there is a clearly show that uh, that um, endotracheal tube selection in 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 in, in, in children or, or infants is uh, ultrasound is uh, extremely uh, uh, useful uh, to predict optimal number, optimal uh, optimal size of the tube. Also, uh, same is uh, with uh, with uh, left double lumen tube selection, uh, uh, tracheal um, uh, uh, diameter uh, measurement by by a CT scan is in, is in direct correlation with the tracheal diameter with ultrasound, and there is a well known uh, well known um, uh, guidelines uh, uh, according to Brodsky and Cho published. Uh, 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 20, 30 years ago, and if you uh, may, uh, if you uh, use uh, tracheal uh, measurement, uh, you can use it on same way like 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 uh, MSCT uh, diameter, and, and that, that is in this meaning you can uh, choose a proper number of uh, left double lumen tube. What is very very important in in, 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 in everyday practice in clinical circumstances because if is a tube so small. Small, you have a leak of uh, air, and you have not uh, uh, adequate corpse of lung. If is a, uh, if is a, a number uh, uh, is too big, you can make a rupture of uh, bronchial rupture, what is a disaster in, 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 in during, during, during anesthesia. Okay, this is some take home point. Mind that ultrasound oh, is, is 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 excellent for error management but uh, uh, largely overlooked today by anesthesiologists and by uh, intensive care physicians and critical care physicians same and i think that is a very strong tool for our everyday everyday everyday, everyday uh, work it's it, Ultrasonography include in, in there is including pre intubation assessment, position of tube, prediction of extubation failure, and uh, and determination of, of proper proper size of endotracheal tube. Okay, that is that will be uh, this is some uh, chapter published last year or uh, two years ago in in, in 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 book respiratory medicine. There is uh, all about about ultrasound and error management. And uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention. I, I hope so. I, I give you some information about this small but very important part of our, our everyday job.
Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you for your nice presentation. I'm going to speak in Spanish for a while. Muchas gracias. Eh, no sé si existiera alguna, alguna pregunta. Les agradecemos. Nos estén acompañando en Facebook a Walter Dailín Cruz. Tenemos a Rodrigo, a Julio Ordóñez, a Lercy Onerón. Eh, que gracias por, por estarnos acompañando. En la parte de Zoom tenemos a varios de ustedes. También les agradecemos. Desde, parece ser que desde Centroamérica, Sudamérica nos escuchan. Si tuvieran alguna pregunta, bueno, solamente tienen que activar eh, los, del, los de la plataforma, solamente tendrán que activar la función de alzar la mano y con gusto podrán hacer algún comentario o alguna pregunta. Eh, como ustedes pueden ver, el, el doctor Alan es un experto mundial en el tema y nos ha eh, explicado muy bien acerca de la utilidad del ultrasonido para eh, la evaluación tanto preoperatoria, transquirúrgica, etcétera, de la vía aérea. Tenemos un, un comentario del doctor Francisco Aguirre. Te voy a activar la, el audio, Francisco, si quisieras hacer algún comentario, ¿ok? Adelante, Francisco, te escuchamos. Puedes, puedes hablar, ¿eh, Francisco, si, si gustas. Activa, activa tu audio. Si, si estás ahí cerca... Eh, Trata de activar tu audio. Yo ya, yo ya te permití hablar. Ah, dice que no, no tengo audio. Eh, probablemente, Francisco, solamente tienes que activar un micrófono que aparece ahí, darle clic. Yo ya te permití hablar. A ver, inténtalo nuevamente, Francisco. Y, y si no puedes, bueno, lo puedes hacer por escrito y como de todos modos yo se la, se la haré tu pregunta al doctor Alan, desde luego. Sí, desde luego, Francisco, puedes hacer la pregunta por escrito. Adelante. Adelante, Francisco, puedes hacerla por escrito. Muy bien. Bueno, mientras esperamos que el doctor Francisco nos, nos haga su pregunta, eh, doctor eh, Alan, I'm gonna, I'm, I have a question for, for you from the audience, Alan. And there are some papers uh, about the, the usefulness of, ultra, of airway ultrasound, about the extubation. I mean, it, it's, it can be useful for, to predict extubation failure or even uh, to predict uh, laryngeal stridor. Uh, I don't know, uh, Alan, if you have some information about this, because apparently we can even measure the size of the air column in the trachea uh, when we deflate the, the, the cough. Um, do you have some experience about predict uh, laryngeal uh, stridor uh, by using the airway ultrasound, Alan? I personally, uh, I personally have not uh, that experience because I am working in adult uh, uh, ICU where it's not so important and uh, if you have some, some problems with, with, with airway management after extubation. But I, I was working with some my friends from Italy who are working in pediatric ICU and uh, uh, especially in as, as infants and they are, um, they are um, in, uh, They, they are using ultrasound in, in, in many cases to predict if they will have a problem after extubation, this specific type of small patient uh, after long-term ventilation. Oh, perfect. Uh, thank you, Alan. Uh, well, uh, there are other questions from the audience in Facebook. I'm going to speak in Spanish and then I'm going to translate you, okay? Eh, Dalia García nos pregunta cuál es la experiencia en extubación respecto a la excursión diafragmática en pacientes sépticos. Alan, uh, one, uh, doctora Dalia García is questioning about how, how to use the ultrasound and specifically the diaphragm in order to extubate the patients, uh, septic patients, because he, she is questioning about the specific septic patients, if the ultrasound of the diaphragm uh, can be useful in this specific field. What do you think about it, Alan? Uh, I, uh, um, of course, that, 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 that ult uh, ultrasound measurement of diaphragm thickness during his inspiration and, uh, is very useful in, in all kinds of patients, including the septic patient. But in my practice, I found that uh, that information are 
important uh, in patient with um, long-term ventilation patient, patient with um, in which you have a problem to 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 to. Um, uh, uh, wean, in patients where is weaning, where you have a serious weaning problem, especially in COBP patients. Perfecto, uh, Alan. Thank you so much. Uh, Asociación Mexicana, estamos eh, <coughs> a dar audio. Si gustas hacer el comentario, ya te activé el audio. <coughs> ¿Qué tal, Juan? Buenos días, este, a todos. Hola. Eh, Tuve problemas de conexión al principio. Soy Arnulfo López. Ah, ¿qué tal, Arnulfo? Como medida de alta. <risa> no te identifico. Este, sí, aparte soy un poco enfermo. Ah, no te eh, Muchas gracias al doctor Alan por su brillante exposición. Aunque me perdí los primeros minutos, no sé si habló de, de la traqueostomía percutánea, por ejemplo, o el manejo con ultrasonido de la intubación retrograda. Ok, ahorita se lo preguntamos como quieras. De hecho, sí. también hay una pregunta en el chat de eso. Ahorita la hacemos. Dime. Ah, quisiera saber este, la utilidad que, que le he encontrado este, a, la, eh, a la visualización del tubo endotraqueal Ajá. con ayuda del globo o sin el globo de la posición del tubo para hacer la función okay. de, de la traqueostomía percutánea. O sea, en, en, en lugar de la broncoscopía, vamos, ¿no? O, sí, para... sí, sí, para, para visualizar la colocación Ajá. o el tejido alrededor del de tubo endotraqueal para hacer una función más segura, ¿no? No, ¿no? no darle alguna estructura como la tiroides. Ok, perfecto. La utilidad del, del, del ultrasonido para visualizar estos tejidos o el tubo endotraqueal para hacer la localizar el punto de punción. Okay, perfecto. Doctor Alan, he is questioning about the usefulness of the airway ultrasound. If you have some experience, please let us know about the, uh, if you have some experience visualizing the, the tissues around the trachea or even the, the, the placement of the tube with uh, ultrasound even instead of the bronchoscopy, because we know the bronchoscopy is worldwide uh, use of, of to, uh, for uh, doing uh, tracheostomy, percutaneous tracheostomy, but we would like to hear you, Alan, about the, your experience by using uh, airway ultrasound in, the, in, in tracheostomy, percutaneous tracheostomy, if you have found useful to use the ultrasound to visualize the tissues around the trachea and specifically the, the place of the tube. Do you have some experience, Alan? Yes, I, I uh, uh, in fact, uh, when I was perf uh, performing this uh, presentation for this webinar, I didn't know what is the topic of your interest, and I chose uh, uh, endotracheal tube placement, but same, there is the same lecture uh, about about percutaneous ultrasound guided percutaneous tracheostomy. I found that ultrasound guided percutaneous tracheostomy is extremely useful for 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 uh, uh, in, in any cases, and we uh, choose ultrasound, um, especially pre pre tracheostomy examination of the neck. Uh, practically routinely uh, in, in every patient uh, because uh, all vascular structure or any any other uh, problem especially vas vascular structure on the anterior side of the neck you will see very e easily with ultrasound and I think that um, the pre-operative pre-tracheostomy examination of neck um, is uh, should be a standard of care in, in every ICU. Right, uh, Alan, Alan, but do you use the ultrasound specifically during the, the procedure? I mean, uh, at the same time you are uh, uh, placing the tube and, and doing the tracheostomy, are, uh, at this moment you are using the ultrasound uh, 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 only before? Routinely, routinely we we use uh, routinely ultrasound just routinely in everyday practice just for preoperative uh, uh, ultrasound uh, uh, examination ultrasound uh, uh, neck assessment. Okay. But in 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 difficult cases, in cases with with uh, unclear anatomy or in cases only or in in, 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 in overweight in in in. in the patient in, in, in obese patient, we 
in, 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 in some cases we, we, we use so-called ultrasound guided tracheostomy in real time. This meaning we make a puncture of trachea under ultrasound culture, control, control. Exactly, the puncture. You use the, the ultrasound during the puncture of the trachea, right? That, that, that is the that, that is, uh, same technique like ultrasound guided vascular access. We use right. that ultrasound guided uh, 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 tracheal access. Exactly. And, and in your opinion, Alan, uh, is it necessary when you are using the ultrasound, airway ultrasound, is it necessary to use uh, the bronchoscopy uh, even if you are using the the ultrasound or the ultrasound of the airway can replace the use of bronchoscopy? Uh, in my ICU, we, uh, ultrasound uh, in, is uh, pr practically replace, replace uh, bronchoscopy. But um, there is many uh, colleagues in Europe uh, uh, who, who use a combination between uh, it and both methods, ultrasound and bronchoscopy, and this is, of course, <laughs> maybe the best way for, for that you are sure for, for any patient. Uh, right. And when, when, when one uh, is performing the airway ultrasound, is it easy to see the, the cough of the, tra the tracheal tube? I mean, we can... No, routine, huh? routinely no, uh, but okay. you, can, you can feel it with saline. Stems, right. of course, and, you will, you, and then you will see cough very easily. That can be useful in, 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 in percutaneous tracheostomy where you need to, to know where is the tip of the, of, of the tube. Right, okay, very well. Um, well, uh, someone, Francisco Aguirre, is questioning about if you have experience about the ultrasound, the airway ultrasound using for placement of cricot cricotidotomy, uh, Alan, uh, using, uh, do you have some experience by using ultrasound or airway ultrasound for cricoti cricotidotomy? Uh, in, 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 our, in, in, our, in our hospital, in, 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 in emergency department, uh, uh, there is a standard to use ultrasound uh, uh, pre, uh, operation examination of the neck when you are doing a cricostomy. This meaning uh, uh, also uh, philosophy is the same like like philosophy with uh, percutaneous tracheostomy. Right, very very good. Um, Alan, can you please show us again your slide about the preoperative assessment in order to see in detail how do you how to how to assess the the airway. Uh, previous to the surgery. Do you have some slides, some pictures about this? Because uh, I think that there are some uh, anesthesiologists in our audience interested to evaluate previous to the surgery with ultrasound the airway. I think uh, for them it can be very, very useful. For, 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 from my point of view, this is the, the most important uh, uh, parameter. This is a, a, a ultrasound preoperative assessment of HIO, uh, uh, HIO uh, mental uh, distance ratio. What is this meaning? This meaning distance between HIO mental distance uh, in normal position, position and in neck extension. This, that difference is is very good predictor of difficult laryngoscopy, and from my point of view, maybe the most useful uh, parameter of any parameters which you which we use in everyday practice. Okay, very very good, uh, Alan. And no sé, Arnulfo, querías comentar algo más. No sé si alzaste la mano. ¿Querías hacer algún otro comentario o, o expresar alguna otra duda, Arnulfo? No, muchas gracias, Juan. Este, creo que se activo por accidente. Ah. Gracias. Okay. okay, very, very good, Alan. Well, this is a, a very, very nice presentation, Alan. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, it seems that there are no questions, there are no uh, comments anymore. So, well, I, I'm going to uh, ask you, Alan, do you want to say something 
uh, for the Mexican audience, I think there, there will be more anesthesiologists day after uh, watching this presentation. And could you please uh, give us some commentary or encourage to our anesthesiologists for using airway ultrasound, Alan? I my, my I really think that the, the best the, uh, take off point uh, uh, take home, home point of this presentation for me is uh, uh, is this uh, this paper I uh, uh, published two years ago uh, uh, about about uh, ultrasound and the, the, the conclusion about was that that is extremely useful method but largely overlooked by anesthesiologists and my suggestion is to my colleagues we use ultrasound and you will find that it's really really useful tool. Thank you, thank you so much. Bueno, pues les agradecemos a todos ustedes el habernos acompañado en este webinario de la Asociación Mexicana de Ultrasonografía Crítica y Urgencias. Este webinario, esta conferencia permanecerá desde luego en nuestro sitio de Facebook, así como en nuestra página de amuscu.mx, para que ustedes puedan ver y con detenimiento cada una de las diapositivas y tomar nota y, y, e ir a buscar las referencias. Creo que puede ser muy útil, no solamente este, sino, sino todos los webinarios, como ustedes pueden ver, están dados por expertos mundiales en el tema, líderes de opinión. Y de verdad estamos muy agradecidos con el doctor Alan. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you for accepting this invitation. Uh, we, we really are honored. Thank you for being part of this webinar. Thank you for spending part of your time with us. Thank you, uh, Alan. Thank, thank you, thank you for the possibility to be a part of your webinar. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish the webinar. The webinar is over. Thank you so much and have a, a nice day. A nice day. Have a, a, a nice weekend. Thank you so much, uh, Alan. Thank you. See you. Best regards for all the uh, Croatia people. Thank you so much. Ciao. Ciao.